On Money Matters uh, this evening, we're speaking to James Pett, the chairman of MO Investments that runs Rift Valley Series. Welcome. Thank you. Now, to kick us off, tell us about uh, this idea of MO buying a farm in, El in, in Eldoret. Uh, we are buying a farm known as Serigoid Hills uh, Limited, a 5,000 acre state of the art farm based um, somewhere east of Eldred, 30 kilometers. But this is not your everyday um, purchase of farm as we used to do after independence uh, from Mzungu uh, um, Zuwa We are actually buying a concept, a concept of um, better land use, land consolidation. The idea of consolidation is still a bit strange to many Kenyans because Kenyans, uh, as we know them, uh, would really like to have a piece of land. And what we see instead of consolidation is actually demarcation of whatever you have. Now, could you tell us what problems this brings? Uh, you take a 5,000 acre farm like this uh, uh, Kruger's farm that we just mentioned, and uh, you move in 500 families, and they break it up into five acres each. You have to do roads for each every every home. You have to build pit latrines for each and every home. You have to put um, a school. And, and very soon, a farm that was producing thousands of bags of wheat and maize, as it does now, uh, is, is actually a net importer of food. And people are really begging their government for relief food, like what we are doing now. So what we are saying is that, yes, there are other challenges that we've had from uh, the concerned uh, policymakers as to why we are having hunger. One of them is dependence on over dependence on rain fed agriculture, um, high cost of inputs, um, post election violence that caused uh, um, farmers to depart uh, to, to, to leave their farms. All those are true, but we have a bigger problem. We are losing arable land to settlements. What kind of policy change can we have now to avert that kind of thing happening in the future? We must get land that is for agriculture to remain as agricultural land. For example, the North Rift has been uh, called the breadbasket of the nation um, because it produces mainly the staple, staple food of um, maize and, uh, and wheat. But right now, many of the farms in the white, former White Highlands of Western Nation, Transroya, that used to produce a lot of food has now been converted into homes. What you're saying is that uh, Kenya is slowly becoming one big village uh, with all these houses dotted all over. Uh, we're also talking about, uh, without glorifying the, the colonialists, we, we know there was a policy of coming up with what they call the, the reserves, the Gishagis, where people live in one area and uh, use the, the arable land is used for other economic activities. Are we saying uh, this is where we want to go back to? Um, yes, I think we are saying, and we, are, we have no shame in saying, some people confuse this to be Ujama, but it's not Ujama. And um, uh, if anything, we've realized that uh, a lot of Mwalimu Nyerere's policies may not have been far off the mark anyway, going by what we have uh, seen in this country. We'll continue having tribal animosity and um, ethnic uh, tensions relating to land, because we have this notion that every Kenyan must own land. What we should be talking about is homeless Kenyans. The government should be uh, struggling to provide homes for Kenyans. And how do you get to convince people that you don't need land to live? Because this happened in Singapore and Hong Kong and everywhere else where, where there isn't much land but uh, probably the, the per capita income is much, much higher. Two ways of convincing people. One is by force using government. That was done in Germany after the Second World War where people were told either you have a minimum acreage of this much in order to produce food for us or you get out and go to town and we'll give you a flat in Berlin. And, 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 and people had no choice. Now, we do not want to wait for that. The best other option is to get communities themselves to understand. You're saying that rural development is not well worked out. I think it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to say the, the, the founding fathers who came up with it, you remember the days of the district forecast for rural development, even when the Kenyatta said, let's go back to the farm. He, he was basically talking about an agrarian economy that we were, uh, after we had chased, uh, we had got our independence, we needed to go back to what the white men were doing. But I think the model of rural development needs to be looked at. 
And how do you stop Kenyans from being so engrossed with this land idea? Because they, they have this thing about land that gets them to fight every other time because they feel the land in itself is, it has a value even when it produces nothing. We have to get Kenyans to understand the value of land is in what it produces, not in its ownership. If you own land, um, just to wait for you to die to be buried in, it has no value. In fact, um, uh, there's a madman in, in, in a, a village near me who has seven acres, but he goes around begging in the street of the centre. But when you tell him, why are you begging and you have seven acres, why, why don't you go and sell it? He says, hey, where will I be buried? You see, he is mad, he is not using, utilizing the land. But he knows it is useful for only one thing, a cemetery. So I think if we need cemeteries, we better create cemeteries that you know you have a place to be buried in. That, that is different. Land, if you own it without utilizing it, it has no value. Let us plan how we live. Otherwise, the lack of planning that we have in Nairobi, Kibera, Korogocho, and the rest of the slums is now going rural. Because the people who used to depend on agriculture in order to buy decent building materials for a, for a good house are no longer able to do it. Hernando de Soto, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. a Peruvian economist who actually is an advisor of the World Bank and IMF, is highly respected. He wrote a book called The Mystery of Capital. And he says, if I may quote him, that in the West or developed countries, a son who wishes to follow in the footsteps of his father as a farmer will buy out his less interested siblings and continue with his father's trade. Farmers in developing countries such as Kenya have no such option and must continuously, continuously subdivide their farms into smaller and smaller pieces until they are too small to farm economically, leaving them with two options, starving or stealing. Isn't that where we are heading as Kenya? Yeah, quite well said. Thank you so much. A fortnight ago, President Moi Kibaki presided over an event that elicited a casual reference in the media. The flagging off of these trucks bearing food donated by Egypt to feed the hungry was a kind gesture by a country coming to the rescue of famine-stricken Kenyans in many arid parts of the country. At independence, citizens were rallied to go back to the land to farm under the late President Jomo Kenyatta's clarion call of Turudi Mashambani. The concept was clearly way off target as it was construed to mean having some land to farm for family subsistence produce, residence and eventually a final resting place. It is no wonder then that Kenya's most arable land is dotted with tin roofs denoting homes and at close-up you find shrines of the families departed. Continued subdivision to bequeath children a share of the ancestral land has led to smaller and smaller units of plots rendering former farmlands to tiny parcels. No meaningful cultivation is possible. At the end of the day, it's not about the inefficiency. I mean, we've been accused by as farmers in Kenya that the production is declining, declining, declining. Why is it declining? Because we are subdividing all our land. It is disheartening to note that communities that once shared land utilization are turning the same lands to large compound with little economic activity going on. And unfortunately, I hate to say it, but people who got their heads buried in, in the sand and don't actually face reality. Now, some years ago, there was, there was some research done and the estimate was that Kenya was losing between two and four percent of its arable land every year through subdivision. Wasangishu is one of the districts still with comparatively large parcels of land under individual ownership. But even here, the demarcation of land to economically unviable units is slowly creeping in. Nigeria produces so much of oil and yet it's one of the most unstable countries. Why? Because the emphasis was not on agriculture.